Javon Solomon was someone who I just didn't think would be on the Bills radar because of his size. The he ticks some of the boxes for the Bills, but I'm actually going to grab that tweet because I don't uh, ba, 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 ba. I should have had it up before, but I didn't. Um, he's just not a guy who ticked the box from a size and frame perspective or what I thought. Height, six foot, seven eighths inches. That's the zero percentile for edges. Weight, 246 pounds. That is the eighth percentile. When it comes to wingspan and arm length and hand size, he's okay with all that. So wingspan, he's in the 51st percentile. Arm length, 63rd, hand size, 96th. And then he's not bad from an athletic testing standpoint. 35th percentile for 10-yard split, not great. But 67th for 40-yard dash, 86th for vertical jump, 67th percentile for broad jump, and 48th percentile um, for bench press. Again, dudes with longer arms usually struggle with the bench press a little bit. But when you look at what Brandon Bean has looked for in his edges in the Bean era um, for the Buffalo Bills, the average height for guys who have been drafted off the edge for the Buffalo Bills has been six foot five. Again, Javon Solomon, almost six one, but not quite. So over four inches shorter than the average they go for. Average weight in the Brandon Bean era, 270 pounds, 270.2 to be specific. Javon Solomon, again, 246 pounds, so about a 24-pound difference. Arm length is close. They go for 34.13 inches under Bean, 33 and 7 8 inches for Solomon. Um, Broad jump, they look for dudes that are 117.33. Solomon actually beat that at 119. 10-yard split is spot on, 1.65 average in the Bean era and 1.66 for um, Javon Solomon. So... For some pieces, he's right on with the um, averages in terms of what the Bills have drafted uh, at the edge position. But he's a huge outlier for size and for weight at the edge position. Again, the Bills traditionally have gone for pocket compression style of rushers. Leonard Floyd, Von Miller are outliers. They look for Boogie Basham and Greg Rousseau and these dudes that are big, thicker type dudes that are going to compress the pocket. You're going to walk a tackle back. They don't really go for bendy guys, athletic guys, moves guys, playing guys right out the gate. They look for length. They look for size. They look for weight. They look for frame. They want heavy dudes that will play the run and compress the pocket and bang against tackles. So Solomon was a bit of an outlier. I thought he was a fine player and a fun player, especially when you look at some of the production. Um, Out of 471 qualifying edges in 2023, he was tied for 33rd in pass rush productivity. He was second in the entire nation in sacks. Again, this is per PFF. They don't do half sacks. He was second in the entire nation for sacks. I believe if you're going, if you're counting like half sacks and you're not doing what PFF does, I think he led the nation in sacks. Then he was tied for 23rd in pressures, tied for 24th in hits, and 47th in win percentage. We do see a lot of snaps in college football, so that's why there's 471 qualifying edges. If you narrow down the filter and go for guys who saw heavier snaps, his numbers get better. So he was productive. He's got moves. He's got plan, but he didn't really tick some of the boxes from a weight and height perspective that are significant for the Bills. And he's a significant outlier. Again, their average height is six foot five. It's not like, well, he's six foot three or six foot four. He's not even officially six foot one. And then weight. They look for dudes that are 270. It's not like, oh, well, he's 260 or 255. He's 246. Those are significant. But I digress. Let's get into some film for Mr. Javon Solomon. I want to just kind of put in perspective who he is, what he is, how he wins. Kind of a little bit opposite, ironically, of what we just showed for Groot. You're not going to see a lot of inside winning for Javon Solomon. The plays that I showed here... um, I went through three full games. I didn't have a ton of Troy tape. I usually like to watch four to six games for a dude. Um, So there is some sample size potentially missing there with me watching three games. But the, what I'm showing you is representative of who he is in these games and a microcosm of what and who he is as a rusher. So this first play um, run defense rep for him, just want to kind of show you his game as a whole, see some of the quickness, watch him get across the face of the, of the tackle bang inside, Make a stop on the run. This is the first play of the game. Good effort. Good motor. Reduce your surface area. Wanted to show it from this angle just so you can see how he affects 
that line. Again, he stays flat. He's not getting pushed off. He's getting right down the line of scrimmage, not getting driven off the play. Smaller type of dude, but has enough core strength where you're not just going to bully him. I do think adjusting to NFL size is going to be an issue for him and seeing how we can handle that, but we'll see. Also something to note for Troy, and you'll see this right here. In Troy's defense, he's lining up here a lot. So this is, um, if you go by number alignment versus an offensive lineman, so lining head up on the center is a, is a zero, lining head up on the guard is a two, lining head up on the tackle is a four. So he's lined up as a four. You'll see him on the inside shoulder of the tackle at times. That's a four I. I don't think at his size, this is suitable for him. You are going to see him living outside as an edge player. That should set him up better for success. You'll see a lot of his good wins on tape here come when he's lined up outside on the edge. I think that's how the Bills will also deploy him. So that comes into perspective as well. The fact that he had the production that he had from a sack perspective and pressure perspective, considering he was seeing a bunch of reps still on the inside, where I don't think that's most advantageous, giving his size and frame is another feather in his cap. But again, you watch quickness, mirrors what he's got going on in front of him. Watch him get skinny here. Turn sideways, reduces his surface area so he can mo maintain momentum, not get blown off the ball here. Splits these two, fights through, makes a tackle on the backfield. Nice rep. He's He's got a motor. I, I said it on draft day when he got taken. He plays like a Velociraptor. Um, and when I mean that, or when I say, when I mean when I say that is motor, effort, relentlessness, hand usage, violence. Like he is always trying to attack. He's always trying to play on the front foot, whether he's rushing the quarterback, whether he's trying to make a play against the run again, adjusting to NFL size, I think is going to be to say it lightly an adjustment for him guys with length guys with hand strength guys with grip strength, but more importantly, the size and the frame and the weight where if they get a hold of him, are they going to bully him and just stalemate him and kind of put him in quicksand and he's got nowhere to go. Can he function against NFL size and strength and NFL quickness as well? Like, because these dudes, these linemen, a lot of them are going to have like 60 pounds on him and be similar to him in terms of athleticism. So that's going to be an adjustment. I, I don't want to say a struggle, but I do think it'll be a challenge for him. What's nice is, and I'm going to show you as we go forward, he already employs a lot of pass rush plan and moves and understanding how to beat guys, how to set guys up, how to win against guys. So that's in his favor. He's got good hands. He has moves. He has plan. That's very nice. Um, and I think that sets him up for success a little bit, but the size is going to be a challenge. Um, another one here for Solomon again. So notice what we got, what I said, zero, a two, a four. Well, that's a little offset, but head up on the tackle would be a four where Solomon on the inside shoulder, so that's a four I for Mr. Devon Solomon. Not the most advantageous thing when you're six foot, 246 pounds. But nonetheless, watch him make this play here. Again, I wanted to show some run stuff. Look at how he, on the snap, he moves down. Diagnose what's going on. Watch the dip right here. Lowers that shoulder, dips, rips through, reduces his surface area. Again, being able to get penetration into the backfield. That's what he is. If he's making plays against the run, He's penetrating, he's one-gapping, he's winning with quickness, reducing his surface area, getting into the backfield. This is what you're going to see. Again, you're not going to see this with the Bills because he's not going to be in a four-eye. Like, they're not going to take him at his size and line him up on the inside shoulder of a tackle in the NFL. He'll get eaten. Like, that. That there's no way that's going to happen. Not to mention, too, the Bills' defensive alignment. They don't play with this kind of stuff a lot or regularly. And if they do, this is going to be Groot or this is going to be Ed Oliver or or smooth or a bigger body defensive end or even defensive tackle. If they're going with bare front stuff or tight front or anything like that. Um, but again, I just wanted to show you the effort he shows against playing the run. He's not some dude with a ton of pass rush numbers and doesn't have substance against the run, which is nice to see now more conducive to his frame and style. You see him in a two point stance. You see him more outside here. We're going to show the end zone in a minute. Watch the pass rush here. Watch the juice, the get off the impact. Who cares that the pass was completed? I don't care about that. Watch on the snap. Boom. Quickness and look at the lean. Look how he leans through that shoulder. When he's winning, he is winning through the arc. He's winning through the outside shoulder of an offensive tackle. He is getting through with dip and bend, some hand usage, a combination of all of it. Get off isn't too, it's not awful, 
It's not amazing. It's not AJ Epinesa level, but he's got this innate ability to turn the corner. He's got enough flexibility, bend, but he's got good core strength, arm length, and hand usage that allows him to beat arms, beat shoulders, chop down hands, and then dip, lean, flatten, and come through offensive tackles around the arc. So going slow-mo here again, see the get off out in space, not in a four, not in a four eye alignment where he's in close quarters against dudes who outweigh him and maybe match his arm length, but definitely have a bigger size and frame than him. He's out in space, gets a one-on-one opportunity. This is what you're going to see for him. He's going to press that outside shoulder. He's going to try and turn the corner. He might jab inside every once in a while or try to set something up inside, but he's not a big inside moves guy. He is an outside dip, bend, rip, hand usage, cross chop type of guy. And you see, watch here as he gets out, feigns that inside arm, right? Puts his hand out, and then look how he dips, powers through, gets some good core strength, offensive tackle can only get on his back, but look how he pushes through. He doesn't get driven into the ground. He doesn't get bubbled outside or too far upfield. He's able to stay flat and bear down on this quarterback, get a pressure, get a nice hit. I'm going to take a look at it from the end zone angle. You're going to see this move a lot from him where he's going to put that arm up. I can never tell if it's like him trying to like set up a ghost rush or if he's going for a literal like chop and he's trying to put it up and then wait for the tackle to put his outside hand up so he can chop it down and rip through. You're going to see this move a lot from him um, where he is putting that arm up and then bending through. And again, what do you see? Flatten, core strength, puts the arm up, tackle flashes his hands. Cool, let me dip and lean through. Then you see that inside arm rip through, flattens good core strength, which he should have, lower center of gravity. He's going to have a lower center of gravity than pretty much everyone he comes up against, but his ability to use it consistently is a very nice piece. Uh, Let me go to some comments because I have been slacking on that. Mike says, is Solomon a niche player, i.e. blitzing from a Sam or in a wide defense? I think he's just an edge defender. If you want to... I think he's more right now, more of a sub package player. If I think that falls into the niche umbrella or niche categorization, um, I would say, yeah, he's, he's more of a sub package dude. I think he's a third down rusher. If he balls out in camp, like he potentially can as a pass rusher, I think he's a dude that I think if he balls out and you want to get him into the lineup, I think you're probably dressing five defensive ends on game day. And then he's seeing maybe 10 to 10 to 12 snaps on passing downs or known passing situations. And you're using him just to go hunt the QB. Not that he can't defend the run. I just don't think you want him at that size and frame. You're looking at him right now, early on as a pass rush specialist, getting his feet wet, adjusting to size, frame, weight, speed, NFL strength, all of that stuff. And you're letting him kind of just hunt from a pass rush perspective. Jenna says that she's very excited for Javon. What up, Jenna? Oh, click, clicking too many things. Mike says, can he drop back as a linebacker occasionally? You'll see him do it. I probably don't want to do that. Um, You can from time to time in a similar fashion, like the Bills drop Rousseau or Vaughn or these dudes to kind of, again, simulated pressures, creeper pressures. But I don't think he's, I don't think he's an off ball linebacker in the NFL. I think he is a pass rusher. If he adds a little weight, we'll see. Or can he live in that small type of Elmis, uh, Elmis, oh, I am flubbing words tonight. Elvis Doomerville type of role. Can he do that? We'll see. But I wouldn't drop him a ton. Occasionally, sure. If you want to do a zone blitz or if you want to do a creeper or a sim, you're more than welcome to. um, But I'm not going to do that regularly. Can he play special teams? Um, I'm going to see if he has any special teams reps. Let me look that up. Um... Yes, he actually has a good amount of special team stuff. Not necessarily coverage. He has some punt coverage reps. He has 37 punt coverage reps in 2021. Um, a lot of his special teams reps have been on field goal block, punt return, and kick return. Um, 48 special teams reps in 2023, 87 in 22, 78 in 21, 70 in 2020, 8 in 2019. But again, a lot of those are more on return units as opposed to coverage, but he does have some coverage experience from a pump perspective and kick perspective. So sure. In theory, um, I know we're always about special teams in terms of guys making, uh, contributions, but with his 40 time again, runs like a four, seven 40, you could get some teams work out of him. 
next rep for Mr. Javon Solomon. This is where it really gets fun. Okay, again, notice we're not in a four. We're not in a four eye. We're outside. We're coming off the edge. We're allowed to get into this space. When you have a wider alignment and you have an edge rusher out in space, this puts this tackle into an island. You get more of a true one-on-one scenario, and that's where he wants to win. Here comes the snap. Boom. Again, what do we see like the other one? He only goes for that chop, or he's going for some move that inside hand. This one's nice. We've shown this multiple times. We showed it with AJ Epinesa tonight. We showed it with Von Miller. Look at the long arm. Look at the stab right into the chest. And then look at the body lean that accompanies it, right? Nice lean. This is a nice physical one. Again, if you can maintain this strength, he's going to have this opportunity because he's going to be shorter than pretty much everyone he comes up against. Not even pretty much everyone he comes up against because he's the size of like a tall running back. He's going to have this opportunity to win leverage. If he can go speed to power regularly, again, I think that's a significant question considering he's 246 pounds. But this is a really nice long arm, good stab. He wins first touch here. Again, pretty good arm length considering his size. Boom, right into the chest. And look at look at the, chain, the change there. Look at the next snap forward. You get some whiplash on that tackle. And then powers through, rips through. Chases the man down for the sack. I'm going to play it in real time, and then we're going to go in slow-mo and break it down again because there's a nice piece at the end there. Oof. So three things with the hand usage that I like on this one. Again, we get that initial placement right in the chest that sets up that long arm. Boom. Left arm in there. Long arm. Nice. Watch. I know it's hard to see from this angle. College only gives us two. Watch the outside arm. Watch the right arm. Bites through the outside arm of the tackle. Removes it. And then, boom. Look at You can see it right there. Perfect timing. Shout out to myself for this. It's nice because he has the white glove. Chops down on that outside arm. And then when he chops through that outside arm, he then rips and brings himself through. And he runs the arc. Again, hand usage, all in the blink of an eye. You get speed, you get some dip, you get some bend, you get some core strength. Again, he's able to flatten to the QB, which is nice, but there's multiple aspects that can translate to the NFL here. What's also nice about this one is, again, you're you're, you're putting moves together. It's not just, well, you got the long arm and you got through. Hit him with a long arm, right? Transition that into a chop, and then transition that chop into a rip and a pull through. Boom. Kind of three moves, all in the blink of an eye. Chaining them together, transitioning from one to the other in succession, in the blink of an eye, and using all that with some dip, with some bend, some core strength to flatten and get through. That is translatable. That is nice. One more time. Going slow-mo. Again, stab. And let's also play it in real time, too. Just watch the boom. Get some pop a little. A little bit of pop in those hands. Good long arm. Establish first touch, knock back the man a little bit, jolt him. So you get the long arm, you get the chop, and the rip. All in the blink of an eye. Nice professional approach. Another rush for Mr. Troy Solomon. Again, what I say when he's cooking, when he's winning, he's in a two point, he's outside, he's threatening to run the arc, he's trying to get into space against dudes, he's winning on that outside, he's turning the corner. Here he comes again, different offensive lineman this time, different left tackle. What did I say earlier, right? That left arm that kind of comes through, like he's kind of using it to try and get that offensive tackle to throw his hands and either chop him down or just throw it up and then bend and dip and rip through. Here it comes again, bend, dip, again, flatten, 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 flatten. We've talked about it a bunch tonight in the clips we've shown and heat up the quarterback. Nice, quick pressure. Again, that tackle is going to be able to get hands on him, doesn't, isn't able to push him too wide. Solomon's able to fight through it. Again, you're going to see this move all the time. He's going to bend. He's going to lean. He's going to throw that hand up, get that offensive tackle to shoot his hands, and then he's either going to chop down on those hands or, like this, he hasn't made contact here yet, right? So here we go. Throw the hands, and immediately he drops it, and he's trying to go through. And he's kind of got him a little bit because of the angle and the quickness that he has. But again, it's that bend, it's the dip, it's the core strength, the ability to flatten and get through. You're seeing similar themes with this. Hand usage, dip, bend, 
turn in the corner. You're going to see some pop in the chest, some functionality there, but he's not this big inside moves guy. He's not a huge bull rush or necessarily a speed to power guy. You're going to see hand usage, plan, threaten the outside, try and turn the corner. Another one here, again, wide alignment, out in space. Oof, that one's nice. And then you get the strip and the sack. One more time in real time, and then we'll go into slow-mo. And this one's nice, too, because he's winded. You can see him breathing heavy. He's sucking wind, and he's still able to just win almost instantaneously. Let's break it down in slow-mo again. Hand usage, hand placement. Okay, goes for that long arm again, like he did a couple clips ago. Gets it right into the chest. Good placement, good lean, long arm right in the chest. You're leaning where you've got leverage. You're able to drive your man, but not too much where you're out in front of your feet. You're not really generating or maximizing balance and power. Watch the outside hand. Again, we can see it because he's wearing those nice white gloves. Look at him get the hand right on the wrist. He's established wrist control. What are you going to do when you establish wrist control? He maintains that long arm, chucks that wrist right off him. And you can see the leverage effect it has on the left tackle. Watch as he grabs the wrist. That's what causes the left tackle 72 to fall so significantly. Because he rips that wrist off and he uses it to then pull himself through. So not only does he grab it and remove it, long arm, boom, grab the wrist, get it off you. And then he chucks it and also pulls himself with it. He chucks it, pulls himself through with the long arm as he pulls and detaches, but also still has that wrist control that he chucks down and pulls himself through with. Boom. And then he chops through the arms. Again, all in the blink of an eye. Really nice stuff from Mr. Javon Solomon. Boop. Boom. Real nice. Then he gets to the QB. And again, this is where the nice long arms come into play and the big hands. You run that arc, you turn the corner, having that ability. Like the QB tries to step up a little. Actually, he doesn't even, but Solomon's just taking a wide angle, gets him right on the elbow, strips, play on the ball, long arms, big hands, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Timothy says, oh, love what you do. Appreciate you. Got to catch some Z's. Go Bills. Appreciate you, Timothy. Thank you very much. Also appreciate you smashing that like button with that Macho Man uh, elbow drop like you mentioned earlier. Appreciate you. Let's go to some more Javon Solomon clips, and then we're going to wrap this up here. A lot of these um, wanted to show, again, his ability to hug the line of scrimmage, to play flat, and take good angles to the football. So a lot of the please plays are going to show you the sideline angle and also going to show you the end zone angle. So here's another game from him. Have him highlighted here with this arrow again, more of a reduced alignment because that's the defense they play, not necessarily what's best for him. I want you to watch how he, and we're going to show from the end zone angle to really for you to see his lateral agility and explosion, but watch how tight he stays to the line of scrimmage here as he crashes down and makes the play on the running back. A little bit of meeting of the minds there with this other uh, defender, similar to the Rousseau and Epinesa play that we showed earlier, um, just a little bit different. Again, stay tight shave the corner, come down the line of scrimmage. So remember that angle, right? Think about how tight he is to the line of scrimmage, comes crashing down, makes the play on the running back. Now let's show from the end zone angle. Have him highlighted there with the arrow again. Steps outside. Also helps. It's a little dramatic. It's a good step. Like he makes a good lateral step and bursts outside, but then this offensive line is also shifting down this way, so it helps a little bit. But watch him step. He reads what's going on. Look how he's already leaning so he can turn and hug the line of scrimmage and shave that corner. You don't want to get too far afield. You don't want to take this angle and have somebody run by you. You want to shave that corner. You want to stay tight to the line of scrimmage, and he does. Stays tight, hustles down, boom. Beats at the running back. Good play. Another one. Have him highlighted with the arrow, again, in that kind of reduced alignment. This is a pass rush, but this one highlights kind of the motor and the effort that he plays with. Gets up field. Move doesn't work initially, but he reads what's happening with the quarterback, but he's also reading his man. So he knows right now, you can just see the alignment here and the position of the tackle. He knows he's not getting around him and he's not getting through him. His initial thing didn't work unless he set this up from the get-go. It's not going to work. So cool. Let me get inside. Gets inside. Sees the quarterback is escaping. So he puts the brakes on. Gets back outside. Hand usage. Keeps himself clear. 
heats up the quarterback, forces an incompletion. Watch it from the end zone angle. Again, more of a reduced alignment than you are going to see with the Bills. Almost almost on the outside shoulder uh, of the tackle this time, but still, you don't want him living here or here or here. You want him out in space like we've shown where he can really eat. Watch him here. A little late off the snap. Not the best get, get off. Almost looks like he goes for that jump and cross chop a little bit. He's trying to use his inside hand and chop down and pull himself through. Doesn't get it. Gets hit in midair and gets actually pushed. You see the offensive lineman has his inside arm. It's on the shoulder pad. He's hit him. He got first touch. He's chucked him a little bit. So Solomon is off kilter. Doesn't have a lot of momentum, but he feels the leverage of the tackle. So he puts the brakes on. What do you see? Hand placement, hand usage, chucks him, comes inside. We lose him for a minute. Now, boom, he's bearing down on the quarterback. Oh, quarterback's escaping. Put the brakes on. Watch the outside hand. Boom. Club your man. Get clear. Nice. Motor, effort, Velociraptor type stuff from Javon Solomon. Does it against the run, but you see here against the pass. Adjusting. Adjusting. Adjusting your plan. Adjusting your movement. All the while having some athleticism, having some hand usage, having some hand pop, all that kind of stuff. Relentless motor, relentless effort going up against the QB. Oh, that guy's right in front of the camera. That's super funny. This one here from Javon Solomon. You cannot see him at all because this is funny too because, again, of the alignment, but also his size, right? He is lined up right head up on this left tackle. You cannot see him because he's, again, six foot, 246 pounds. This looks like there's nobody here for Troy. It looks like it's just the linebacker, but Javon Solomon is here. I promise you. This is a bit of a Velociraptor rep against the run on the snap. This is him right here. So he's engaging with that left guard head up. And now we get a bit of a feed block from that left tackle. So he's helping out. We get a bit of a double team. They're both on him. Watch what happens. Just everything here. Now he's kind of keeled over a little bit. He's off kilter, but watch how he just fights through feels that split in the double team. He gets through it. Gets his head up, and he makes a play on the running back. Jumps on his back, helps stall him until his teammates come and help out. We'll watch it all in real time. Boom. Little Velociraptor action. Again, I don't know how well he's going to play the run in the NFL because of his size and his frame, especially early on. I think he's more of a sub-package type of dude, but just highlighting that motor and that effort that he has. And understanding and feeling kind of what's going on, especially as that on that as that interior player. Like if you are in a reduced alignment like he is here, you have responsibility on these inside gaps. So he's working. Like, and it doesn't have to be the cleanest thing. The fact that he's able to just withstand the double team and muddy it up is enough. The fact that he's able to also play off of it, split it, is a good play. Also, because if he doesn't, this running back's getting through and maybe he's getting like a positive gain. Um, and if he breaks a tackle, who knows? Could get a little bit more. Okay, some real juicy ones here for Mr. Javon Solomon. Now, no more four-eye alignment or four alignment lining up, um, uh, head up on the tackle on the inside shoulder of him. Two-point stance outside. And there he is. What's he doing? Dipping, ripping, bending around the corner, turning the arc, flattening, or just taking an angle to the quarterback wherever the QB is. Boom. I'm going to show it again from this angle in real time. Then we'll show it from the end zone angle in real time and go for some slow-mo to break down what he does. Mm. Bears right down on the quarterback. And again, if you saw it in the real time, what did you see? Like we've seen go to the out. What's he doing? He's going to go to the outside. There goes that inside hand, that left hand. If he's uh, rushing off the right side or left side from our vantage point here, throws up that left hand. Almost like this one mirrors more of like a ghost rush. Like he's throwing it just to get the lineman to throw his hand so he can dip. That's why you watch it. And I don't know if he's really going for a chop or going for a ghost rush. It feels and looks more ghost rushy to me. But either way, it's the same premise and same purpose. He's throwing that arm, almost feigning it. Because what does it do? Gets the offensive tackle to throw his hands. And then what does he do? He dips. He leans. He bends. He turns that corner, you get the rip with that inside arm, and he's going through. 
rinse and repeat if you are Javon Solomon. Went around the corner, turn the corner, dip, bend, hand usage, rip, all that kind of stuff. Whoop, whoop. And again, the ability, core strength, mentioned it a couple times with him, gets through, but this tackle gets some hands on him, and he's able to push him. Solomon leans right on him, leans right through, bears down on the QB, gets the sack. Real nice. Sideline loves it. Now, this one's a nice two. Again, we or a nice. This one's a nice one too. We've talked about transitioning moves, um, chaining moves together. He goes for a cross chop here. So you're going to get that jump cross chop. You see him hitting it right here. He's trying to take this right arm and he's trying to bring that over onto the outside arm of that tackle. And then he's going to pull himself through and turn the corner. He goes for it. Doesn't work. Right tackle gets him as he's airborne. Not a good rep, right? Offensive tackle is on you. The offensive tackle's right hand is in the center of your chest. You don't have leverage. You don't have positioning. But watch what he does. So he went for a move here. It didn't work. He adjusts, rips through, flattens, still gets to the quarterback and heats him up. Watching in real time. Again, going for that cross chop with the jump. Doesn't get it. But watch how he, okay, just adjusts. Just adjust his pattern, adjust his course, adjust the plan. It didn't work. Okay, let me figure something else out. The ability to chain moves together in succession and in sequence with one another. Also a nice little, see that right tackle throw that initial right hand? He's kind of feigning that punch a little bit to get Solomon to commit. Watch him shoot that right hand like psych. Nope. Goes for that chop. Doesn't work. But as he lands, and his hands aren't in great position here. You can see him because they're white gloved. But as he lands, he can feel the leverage, feel the positioning. Okay, cool. Let me lean. And the strength here, again, we get some dip, we get some bend, but it's that core strength, the ability to lean and turn and rip through the hands or the outside shoulder of an offensive tackle. Again, this is how he has won in college. Pulls through. Look at him dragging. The offensive lineman is even trying to hook him, maybe hold him a little bit. Isn't really technically holding because they don't call that it when dudes are trying to rip through. Boom. Drops his hips. Drives through. This is how he's consistently won in college. Winning that outside. Dip, bend, core strength, hand usage, moves, plan, transition, all of that kind of stuff. Now, what I've said before, and I'm going to say again with him, I do think it's going to be an adjustment for Javon Solomon to um, NFL life. NFL size, NFL frame, NFL strength, NFL speed at the tackle spot. I don't know if he's going to be able to have that same impact with his core strength turning the corner against NFL tackles, or if he'll be able to have that same type of success with that move where he flashes that hand, dips, and bends. I don't know if tackles are going to be like, and just punch the hell out of him and chuck him five yards because he doesn't weigh a ton. How does that low center of gravity play? How does that core strength play, the length, the size, the plan? I do think what's good for him is, again, he does have a good understanding of pass rush moves, of plan, of leverage, of spacing, of body positioning. So he does come into the league with some good tools and a good understanding from a football IQ standpoint. I just think he's going to be have to have to be so on point with those to combat the overall smaller nature of his size and frame. But it's not out of the realm of possibility, and I'm excited to see what he can be um, as a rookie and also potentially going forward again because the Bills need somebody who can be. Even if he's just a pass rush specialist, I think there's a lot of value in that. You got somebody on known passing downs who can hunt and get to the QB. There's significant value in that, not just for the Bills, but for anyone. 